May 27th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Kings chapter 8 from the Old Testament. Then Solomon convened in Jerusalem, Israel's elders, all the leaders of the Israelite tribes and families, so they could witness the transferal of the Ark of the Lord's Covenant from the city of David, that is Zion. All the men of Israel assembled before King Solomon during the festival in the month of Ethanim, the seventh month. When all Israel's elders had arrived, the priests lifted the ark. The priests and Levites carried the ark of the Lord, the tent of meeting, and all the holy items in the tent. Now King Solomon and all the Israelites who had assembled with him went on ahead of the ark and sacrificed more sheep and cattle than could be counted or numbered. The priest brought the Ark of the Lord's Covenant to its assigned place in the inner sanctuary of the temple, in the most holy place, under the wings of the cherubs. The cherubs' wings extended over the place where the Ark sat. The cherubs overshadowed the Ark and its poles. The poles were so long their ends were visible from the holy place in front of the inner sanctuary, but they could not be seen from beyond that point. They have remained there to this very day. There was nothing in the ark except the two stone tablets Moses had placed there in Horeb. It was there that the Lord made an agreement with the Israelites after he brought them out of the land of Egypt. Once the priests left the holy place, a cloud filled the Lord's temple. The priests could not carry out their duties because of the cloud. The Lord's glory filled his temple. Then Solomon said, The Lord has said that he lives in thick darkness. O Lord, truly I have built a lofty temple for you, a place where you can live permanently. Then the king turned around and pronounced a blessing over the whole Israelite assembly as they stood there. He said, The Lord God of Israel is worthy of praise because he has fulfilled what he promised my father David. He told David, Since the day I brought my people Israel out of Egypt, I have not chosen a city from all the tribes of Israel to build a temple in which to live. But I have chosen David to lead my people Israel. Now my father David had a strong desire to build a temple to honor the Lord God of Israel. The Lord told my father David, It is right for you to have a strong desire to build a temple to honor me, but you will not build the temple. Your very own son will build the temple for my honor. The Lord has kept the promise he made. I have taken my father David's place and have occupied the throne of Israel, as the Lord promised. I have built this temple for the honor of the Lord God of Israel and set up in it a place for the ark containing the covenant the Lord made with our ancestors when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in front of the entire assembly of Israel and spread out his hands towards the sky. He prayed, O Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth below. You maintain covenantal loyalty to your servants who obey you with sincerity. You have kept your word to your servant, my father David. This very day you have fulfilled what you promised. Now, O Lord, God of Israel, keep the promise you made to your servant, my father David, when you said, You will never fail to have a successor ruling before me on the throne of Israel, provided that your descendants watch their step and serve me as you have done. Now, O God of Israel, may the promise you made to your servant, my father David, be realized. God does not really live on the earth. Look, if the sky and the highest heaven cannot contain you, how much less this temple I have built. But respond favorably to your servant's prayer and his request for help, O Lord my God. Answer the desperate prayer your servant is presenting to you today. Night and day may you watch over this temple, the place where you promised you would live. May you answer your servant's prayer for this place. Respond to the request of your servant and your people Israel for this place. Hear from inside your heavenly dwelling place and respond favorably. When someone is accused of sinning against his neighbor and the latter pronounces a curse on the alleged offender before your altar in this temple, be willing to forgive the accused if the accusation is false. 
Listen from heaven and make a just decision about your servant's claims. Condemn the guilty party, declare the other innocent, and give both of them what they deserve. The time will come when your people Israel are defeated by an enemy because they sinned against you. If they have come back to you, renew their allegiance to you and pray for your help in this temple. Then listen from heaven, forgive the sin of your people Israel, and bring them back to the land you gave to their ancestors. The time will come when the skies are shut up tightly and no rain falls because your people sinned against you. When they direct their prayers towards this place, renew their allegiance to you and turn away from their sin because you punish them. Then listen from heaven and forgive the sin of your servants, your people Israel. Certainly you will then teach them the right way to live and send rain on your land that you have given your people to possess. The time will come when the land suffers from a famine, a plague, blight, and disease, or a locust invasion, or when their enemy lays siege to the cities of the land, or when some other type of plague or epidemic occurs. When all your people Israel pray and ask for help, as they acknowledge their pain and spread out their hands towards this temple, then listen from your heavenly dwelling place, forgive their sins, and act favorably toward each one based on your evaluation of his motives. Indeed, you are the only one who can correctly evaluate the motives of all people. Then they will obey you throughout their lifetimes as they live on the land you gave to our ancestors. Foreigners who do not belong to your people Israel will come from a distant land because of your reputation. When they hear about your great reputation and your ability to accomplish mighty deeds, they will come and direct their prayers toward this temple. Then listen from your heavenly dwelling place and answer all the prayers of the foreigners. Then all the nations of the earth will acknowledge your reputation, obey you like your people Israel do, and recognize that this temple I built belongs to you. When you direct your people to march out and fight their enemies, and they direct their prayers to the Lord toward his chosen city and this temple, I built for your honor. Then listen from heaven to their prayers for help and vindicate them. The time will come when your people will sin against you, for there is no one who is sinless, and you will be angry with them and deliver them over to their enemies, who will take them as prisoners to their own land, whether far away or close by. When your people come to their senses in the land where they are held prisoner, they will repent and beg for your mercy in the land of their imprisonment, admitting, We have sinned and gone astray. We have done evil. When they return to you with all their heart and being in the land where they were held prisoner and direct their prayers to you toward the land you gave to their ancestors, your chosen city, and the temple I built for your honor, then listen from your heavenly dwelling place to their prayers for help and vindicate them. Forgive them all the rebellious acts of your sinful people and cause their captors to have mercy on them. After all, they are your people and your special possession whom you brought out of Egypt from the middle of the iron smelting furnace. May you be attentive to your servants and your people Israel's request for help and may you respond to all their prayers to you. After all, you picked them out of all the nations of the earth to be your special possession. Just as you, O Sovereign Lord, announced through your servant Moses when you brought our ancestors out of Egypt. When Solomon finished presenting all these prayers and requests to the Lord, he got up from before the altar of the Lord, where he had kneeled, and spread out his hands toward the sky. When he stood up, he pronounced a blessing over the entire assembly of Israel, saying in a loud voice, The Lord is worthy of praise, because he has made Israel his people, secure just as he promised not one of all the faithful promises he made through his servant Moses is left unfulfilled may the Lord our God be with us as he was with our ancestors may he not abandon us or leave us may he make us submissive so we can follow all his instructions and obey the commandments rules and regulations he commanded our ancestors may the Lord our God be constantly aware of these requests of mine I have presented to him, so that he might vindicate his servant and his people Israel as the need arises. 
then all the nations of the earth will recognize that the Lord is the only genuine God. May you demonstrate wholehearted devotion to the Lord our God by following his rules and obeying his commandments as you are presently doing. The king and all Israel with him were presenting sacrifices to the Lord. Solomon offered his peace offerings to the Lord 22,000 cattle and 120,000 sheep. Then the king and all the Israelites dedicated the Lord's temple. That day the king consecrated the middle of the courtyard that is in front of the Lord's temple. He offered their burnt sacrifices, grain offerings, and the fat from the peace offerings, because the bronze altar that stood before the Lord was too small to hold all these offerings. At that time Solomon and all Israel with him celebrated a festival before the Lord our God for two entire weeks. This great assembly included people from all over the land, from Lebo Hamath in the north to the brook of Egypt in the south. On the fifteenth day after the festival started, he dismissed the people. They asked God to empower the king and then went to their homes, happy and content because of all the good the Lord had done for his servant David and his people Israel. God, whenever I read this chapter, I always kind of pause it, verse 43, with, with wishful thinking, I guess. Then listen from your heavenly dwelling place and answer all the prayers of the foreigners. Then all the nations of the earth will acknowledge your reputation, obey you like your people Israel do, and recognize that this temple I built belongs to you. Just that thought of all the nations of the earth acknowledging you, God. <sighs> it is just an amazing, overwhelming, exciting, and disheartening at the same time thought. Because it feels like we're so far away from that. There's so much backlash against Christians today. So much backlash against the Bible and... Obviously, you already know against you. Sadly, it's even coming from inside the church. It's kind of amazing to think, though, that there will be a time when all the nations of the earth acknowledge you, God. Acknowledge your amazing name, your sovereignty, your grace, your power. And I do hold that tight in my heart, especially when I see how many people so flippantly talk uh, in horrid ways about you and your people and your word. And it just breaks my heart. God, we are a people who just care about ourselves. We can't get past our own ego of what it is that we want to see that what you want for us is better. To see that this amazing earth that you built for us is because of how much you love us. And we definitely can't, can't get past our own illusion of power to understand your sovereignty or even what that means in our own lives. I was talking to a friend today about sovereignty. Uh, She's struggling with holding on to control of things and, and not letting them go to you, not letting you take over. And so, so we had this really great conversation about how she is applying the filters of situations that happened here on earth. She's applying them to you. So because she was hurt by someone, she thinks that you will hurt her. Yet you have never hurt her. <laughs> you have only loved her. Um, and you have never, ever done anything but love her and be faithful to her, unlike this specific other person in her life. And this control that she's trying to hold on to is actually stopping her from seeing your full glory. And I was thinking about that a lot today because the, the conversation just meant so much, just went into my heart and I will probably be praying about it for quite a while. I thought about her, her and her daughter, that if she had had total control over her daughter from the time that her daughter was young, and let's say she, although she would never do this, she's a, a really good mom, um, 
she made her daughter do everything that she wanted her to do. Uh, she would put these clothes on. She would take these classes. She would talk this way. She would do this. She would do that. And she forced her child through control to be a certain way. Then she would never see the amazing child that her daughter has turned out to be. That all of the incredible facets of her child that have come out from her letting go of control and letting this person grow into their own person, she would have never seen those things. And I think about that with you, God. She's so holding on so tight to control in her life that she can't see all the amazingness that you are, that you have. That by holding on to her own kingdom, by holding on to her own temple, like we just talked about yesterday, she can't see how incredible you are. She can't get past her filter. She can't get past her own hurt. And yet I know from my own experience that if I just lay that down at your feet and open up my hands, just like Solomon did at the temple, lift my hands up to the heaven and just turn everything over to you, God. I get to see your glory. I get to see your mercy. I get to see your grace and a lot of it. I get to see your love. But when I, when I close my arms inside, when I hold everything really close to my chest and when I try and hold on to everything and control everything as though it were mine to control, I can't see anything about you. You just become muddy as though you were a peer to me here on earth instead of this amazing sovereign God who is our king. God, thank you for making me your chosen child. Thank you for making me a member of your royal family and heir to an eternal life with you. Thank you for allowing me and helping show me how to give up control in my life. How to give up everything so that I could have even more. I had no idea. Thank you for taking me through hell and back three or four dozen times to teach me what I needed to see in order to give up that control. God, that had to, most, had to be one of the most freeing times of my life once I understood if I gave everything up, I would get more. That was just crazy to learn. And that incredible peace that came into my life while all drama continued to swirl around in my life that amazing peace that you brought to my heart that I can't even describe. I could never write about. Not fully, not how amazing it is. God, thank you. That as I let go of my control, as I let go of me being in charge more and more, or the illusion of being in charge more and more, Thank you for showing me more and more of who you really are. The characteristics of you and, and your son and of the Holy Spirit. It's just like every day I get to learn more and more about you. As you would in any relationship as you're falling more and more in love with person. Every day. I think this is the most I could be possibly in love with you. And nope, the next day I'm more in love with you and I get to learn more about you. And it just becomes so exciting. God, I just pray that everyone listening today hold out their hands to you. They must be so heavy with all the burdens of control that they're trying to manage. And just let them turn it over to you because I know that you will take on all of that for them. And you will make it right and you will make it good for what you need it to be good for. You have told us repeatedly, we don't have to do that. <laughs> we don't have to do all that hard work that you've promised to take on our yoke for us. And it's usually a yoke of our own doing, of things we've messed up and we're now having to turn it over to you as a mess. Because we're a mess. <laughs> and with your incredible grace, you forgive us for that mess. And you lift it up off of our shoulders. And you unravel it. And you hand it back to us in the form of mercy. 
with everything clean, pure, white as snow. And you do all this because of how much you love us. And there is no way in the world we're ever going to start to understand how much you love us until we stop loving ourselves so much and we're and we're willing to give up that control that we have and give it to our king our father who will take care of everything for us god you you must become greater i must become less i love you very much in your son's name i pray amen